here we go guys it's lesson 3.4 solving incomplete quadratic equations our objective for today is that students will be able to identify and solve incomplete quadratic equations. so as you can recall a quadratic equation is anything that's in the form a x squared plus b x plus c now for an incomplete quadratic equation a quadratic equation that's in the form of a x squared plus c equals zero are known as incomplete why because there is no b term the way we solve such quadratic equation is the zero product law so example one says Solve each of the following incomplete quadratic for all value of x. If an equation fails to have any real number solution, state so. So the first thing that I would like to do, there again, this is incomplete, there's no b term. So I want to get rid of my c term. So I'm going to add 16 on both sides. I do the opposite. I'm left with x squared is equal to 16. Now instead of x squared, I want it to have x. So what I'm going to do to get rid of the square is take the square root. This is cancel and then I have x is equal to the square root. The square root of 16 is plus or minus 4 and those are my two answer choice. Now let's look at the second example. So I want x by itself. I notice it says 2x square. This is multiplying so I do the inverse which is dividing by 2 on both sides. 2's are cancel, and I'm left with x squared equals 25. I take the square root of both sides, and I'm left with x is equal to plus or minus 5. Let's look at example C. So again, this is like solving a two-step equation. Add 8 on both sides. This is cancel, 5x squared equals 20, divide by 5 on both sides, x squared is equal to 4, then I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and x is equal to plus or minus 2. Okay, our key thing is to take our c term and get it over by itself and then solve for x. And remember, you're going to always get two answer because there are quadratics. Moving on, let's see this example here. Now I want a minus eight, minus seven, sorry, on both sides. Sevens are canceled. Two over three x squared is equal to negative six. Get rid of my three. That's dividing. So I'm going to times three on both sides. 3's are cancelled, 2x squared is equal to minus 6 times 3 is 18. Divide both sides by 2. I'm left with x squared is equal to minus negative 9. Be careful, negative divided by a positive is a negative. And then get rid of my square, I'll do the square root. And the square root cancel, and you can put this in the calculator, the square root of negative 9, you will see it says error or undefined. So in this case, you cannot take the square root of a negative number, so there are no real results. Or you can write no solution, either one works. And again, there's no solution because you can't take the square root of a negative number. E. Again, add 7 on both sides. This is cancel. 4x squared is equal to negative 6 plus 7 is a positive 1. Divide both sides by 4. I have x squared is equal to 1 quarter. Take the square root of both sides square root and the square cancels off this becomes x is equal to plus or minus one half
now our last one. I'm gonna have you pause the video and try the last one on your own and see if you get what I got. Okay, go ahead, pause the video. Now that you got a chance to try this, I hope you got x is equal to plus or minus 9. Again, we're going to start by simply minusing 4 on both sides. Then I want to multiply by 9 on both sides because I need to get rid of my denominator first. Then I divide both sides by 2 and take the square root. Good job. Moving along, it says solve each of the following incomplete quadratics for all value of x and place your answer in two decimal places. That's what I'm looking at. So now what I want to do, same thing like I did before, put all my constant on one side. This is cancel. I'm left with 3x squared. What's 19 plus 5? 24. Divide both sides by 3. This is cancel x squared is equal to 8. Take the square root of both sides. And now this is not a perfect square, but I, I'm still going to get two answer. x is equal to plus or minus. What's the square root of 8? And I want to round that to two decimal places. So get your calculator and tell me. So I got my calculator here. I want to go to calculate and I want to check the square root of 8. If you look at it, it says 2.828, but the question asked me for two decimal places. So if I was to round this to two decimal places, it will be 2.83. So plus or minus 2.83. Okay? Now let's try B together. Minus 1 on both sides. 10x squared is equal to 5. Divide both sides by 10. I'm left with x squared is equal to 1 half. Take the square root of this. And x is equal to plus or minus. And let's go to the calculator. Square root of 1 half. Remember to get the division sign, I do control division and I hit enter. This is 0 0.7071. I want it to two decimal places, so this is 0 0.71. So my answer is 0 0.71. X is equal to plus or minus 0 0.71. Two more examples here, Exam exercise three. Solve each of the following equations for all value of x, which is similar to what we've been doing. Now the first thing I want to do is get rid of my square root. So take the square root of both sides, because that's what's going to get rid of the square. I'm left with no parentheses needed. x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus 6. So now I can branch this off. I know it's x minus 2 equal to a positive 6, or x minus 2 equals to a negative 6. Add 2 on both sides. x is equal to 8, or I can add 2 on both sides. x is equal to negative 4, and these are my two answer choices. So again, the difference with this was that we needed to get rid of the square on the top. And then we just solve like we normally would. Alrighty, last example for this exercise. So now be careful. This has two parentheses, x plus 4 squared is equal to 64. Before I can get rid of this square that's right here, I need to get rid of the number that's next to the parentheses. In the previous example over here, we didn't have any number. So what I want to do is divide both sides by 2. The 2's are cancel. x plus 4 squared is equal to 32. Now I take the square root of both sides to get rid of that. So this becomes x plus 4 is equal to plus or minus square root of 32. We're going to leave this in this form, which is fine. 
because it wasn't specified to put it in decimal. Minus 4 on both sides. X is equal to plus or minus square root of 32 minus 4. And you can get this in decimal form, but depending on what they ask you for, okay? And then before I let you guys go and practice on your own, I want to review on how do we solve each of the following prime quadratic equation by completing the square. So on the regions, this is normally a short response of completing the square. Express your answer in the simplest radical form. So, I'm going to do 1 and 2, A and B, and you're going to try C on your own. So, remember, completing the square, it says there's a few steps. First step is I want to get rid of this 23 by itself. So, this becomes x squared minus 10x is equal to negative 23. Okay? Then I want to take this term that's next to my x and divide it by 2. So, in this case, it's 10 divided by 2, which is 5, and then square it. So 5 squared is 25. What am I going to do with this 25? I'm going to add it to both sides. So this becomes x squared minus 10x plus 25 is equal to minus 23 plus 25. This, I know, is a perfect square x minus 5 square is equal to positive 2. And then this is a simple example like we just did on the previous page. Take, oopsie, take the square root, let's get rid of that line, take the square root of both sides, cancels off, x minus 5 is equal to the square root of 2, and then I'm going to add 5 on both sides. This 5's are cancel. x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2 plus 5. And that's my final answer. So review your completing the square notes if you're lost. Alrighty, so what I want you guys to do, we got A as x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2 plus 5. Go ahead and try B. I will end up doing C with you because I need to review some more terms. So take, pause the video, take a few minutes and try B for me. Alright, let's see what did we get for letter B. So remember, first thing is to take away 18 on both sides. I'm left with x squared plus 12x equals to negative 18. And remember, I want to do this by completing the square. So I take the term in front of the b, which is 12. I divide it by 2, which is 6. And then I square that answer, which is 36. Now that I got 36, I'm going to add it on both sides. And when I add 36 on this side, this becomes a perfect square of x plus 6 squared. Minus 18, negative 18 plus 36 is a positive 18. Take the square root of both sides. And again, this says simplest radical, so I need to break this square root of 18 down, uh, which is square root of 9 times 2, and I know the square root of 9 is 3, and then I keep my 2 in the radical sign. This becomes x plus 6 is equal to 3 radical 2. Get, want to get x by itself, I minus 6 on both sides, and then my final answer is x equals plus or minus 3 times radical 2 minus 6. Now let's go ahead and work on letter C. This one, what I wanted to follow up with you is that Remember, when we're doing completing the square, it only applies when the x is 1. So in this case, my x is 2, so I want to divide every single thing by 2. Oops. Let's make this a little neater. I want to divide every single thing by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. I'm left with x squared minus 6x plus 2 equals 0. 
x squared minus 6x is equal to negative 2. I want to take my constant over. Now I want to take my middle term, which is 6, divided by 2, which is 3, and then I want to take that answer and square it, which is 9. So what I'm going to do with this 9 is I'm going to add this 9 to both sides, and I'm going to be getting x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to minus 2 plus 9. This becomes a perfect square of x minus 3 squared. Remember, the c, what's in front of my, I'm sorry, what's in front of my b term? The sign comes in the middle, perfect. And then this becomes 7. And from here, it's a simple one-step, two-step equation that we're going to solve. So take the square root of both sides. These are canceled x minus 3 is equal to the radical 7, add 3 on both sides, x is equal to 3 plus or minus square root of 7. Notice I did this where I put the number in the front and in the previous examples I always put the radical in the front. The order does not matter. Okay, so this can be plus or minus radical 3 Radical 7, sorry, plus 3, same exact thing. All right, the hardest problems are these completing the squares. So what you're going to do is review the unit on completing the square. There was a set of steps that you need to follow. All righty, good luck on those practice problems. See me when you're ready.